All right, everyone. Once you get the crank, you're supposed to go all the way back to the top of island number one. I had totally forgotten this, but apparently there is a crank spot at the top of this island, so that's what we're trying to get to. Yeah, I imagine it's connected to that zip line, because we've got multiple zip lines going off of island number one. So we'll just change the zip line, and that will let us get to island number three. to get there, I apologize. Here we go. Inside the compound. Let's see, where is that next ladder? Here it is. I'm standing on it. Okay. Figures I'd be standing on the ladder. Alrighty, so where is the next ladder? I was standing on it again. I'm not good with ladders. Just, just not, just not very good with ladders. Well, obviously that's me standing near the exit. Okay, so let's go here. That, not that exit. exit, and here we go. This is the spot where we use the crank, obviously. Okay. Okay, move that there. Might remember we had to make an eclipse with this puzzle to open the doors. So, which type of eclipse do we have here? Oh. We have the other type of eclipse. Okay, so let's, let's have the eclipse where the sun is in between Earth and uh, I mean the moon is in between the Earth and the Sun. Should be good. Great. So now I can use this zip line and get to island number three. Beautiful. What awaits us on this island? Well, in terms of astronomy, we've gotten kind of all the way to Copernicus and Galileo. <laughs> but astronomy obviously did not finish with the two of them. There's obviously a lot more to discover, like planet Pluto. And then we can decide that Pluto isn't a planet later on. And everybody who loves planet Pluto will be sad. Okay, this clearly looks like the start of our puzzles. Yep, start of our puzzles. Let's pick up these notes. And then let's go up the ladder for the puzzle. Whoa, okay. This is, this is a puzzle, isn't it? Okay, wow. Uh, let's, let's read my notes. Let's read my notes. Today we explored the main part of Wretched Island, uh, Wretched Minor, across the bridge. The rotating bridge and the zip lines. Well, I already solved that puzzle. <laughs> These notes would have been useful before I solved the puzzle. Okay, long cables which just zigzag everywhere. At breakfast I talked about Aristotle's physics. Okay, yeah, we did need to disprove some of Aristotle's physics to have the proper physics, I suppose. For the sun to rise and set, Earth must rotate. But if it did, then every rock of Earth would be moving in a circle. And uh, Earth doesn't do that. Otherwise, people would fall off. Hmm, quantitative analysis. Oh my. Dad suggested I do something like this. Oh man. Oh. Oh no, this looks super complicated. Okay, I'm 
charting lines and making slopes. So let's just read this entire thing. Dad suggested I use on a blank sheet of paper. He drew this horizontal line. One, two, three. So that's time and distance. Okay. Very much looks like that. So red slope. Yeah, red's got a higher slope than the others. Purple has the, the smallest slope. So I wonder what... Ah. Oh, but I have to press these buttons, too. Ugh, ugh. It'd be easier if I just had to uh, figure out which slope it is. Okay. Well, anyway, red slope is highest, um, followed by yellow, so let's get that. Um, then green, then blue, and then purple. And I really hope I'm remembering my math correctly. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on a second. Time over distance. So, shortest amount of time equal distance, right? So that's why it's it's larger. So, um, time, time comma distance. Give me a second. So if time is first, the thing that takes the most time is the one which is last. So purple is the one that took the most time, as we can see. Purple took a lot of time. So we have to switch these around. Just like this, so um, time over distance is, you know, smallest to largest. Next I need to figure out what slope is, so let's figure out what our slope is that we're trying to calculate. Is it just me, or did we just skip a couple of grades when it came to uh, <laughs> uh, math? As I was plugging in these points, I saw that they could be connected with one straight line. That's called a slope. You calculate the slope of the line of graph by dividing the vertical size of the interval by the horizontal slides of the same interval. So 30 divided by 3 equals 10. So that's 3 meters. Okay, you can calculate the slope as distance divided... Ow, oh, my brain hurts. So there's an example. 10 over 1... 20 over 2. We've got a couple of examples. So, for example, this is 6. Um, oh, gosh. So it's 60 over 6, so that's 10. Uh, 60 over 10 is 6. 60 over 12 is 5. 60 over 15 is 4, and then 60 over 20 is 3. Boom. Yes. No. Maybe so. Did I do it backwards? The game is telling me that's not the correct solution. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, and I thought I had that, too. Okay. I could swear I have that right. 10, 6, 5, 4, and then 3. Maybe I'm wrong about the times and the others. So let me go back to my original assertion about the, the times where it was larger to smaller. That doesn't seem to have charged this thing at all. So let's read again. You calculate the slope of the line on the graph. The total distance divided by the total time. Are you calculated by taking the smaller section? Uh, let's do distance over time. Oh, here's more. One can also make a speed time graph where the vertical axis tracks speed instead of distance. Since distance is multiplied by time, one can get the distance by calculating. Hmm. I didn't want this video to end with failure, so I just looked up the solution. That's the solution. Time and distance. Apparently time and distance have to look like that. Okay, not 100% sure why that's the case, but that is the solution to the puzzle. So in the next video, I will continue exploring the island, see what unlocking that puzzle has done for me.